how to know if your vitamin C products have oxidized. What is vitamin C oxidation? Why does it happen to some of our beauty and skincare products? What does it mean for us and how do we prevent it? We've spoken ad nauseum about the benefits of vitamin C for brightening skin, for wound healing, for antioxidant properties, and even sunscreen boosting on this channel. But we also know that vitamin C or ascorbic acid can be a bit finicky. So how do we know if our vitamin C has gone bad? How do we identify it? And of course, how do we prevent it? So this entire idea came to my mind because as I was doing my vitamin C ranking video from the best and worst vitamin C's in my opinion, I pulled this <laughs> out of the back of my cabinet. This is one of my favorite vitamin C's. I used this for years in the past. This is the Juice Beauty Blemish Clearing Serum. And yes, it has tons of vitamin C in it. Back when I was struggling with my acne, this was something that I really found comfort in. I wasn't afraid of the ingredients because I didn't know as much back then, but this was a really effective serum, especially for nighttime use that I really attribute to helping my skin. Now, I love this stuff, but apparently I had one that was just chilling in the back. I wonder what, oh my God, the expiration was 6, 2016. So that's not when it was created. That's when it expired. <laughs> so I've had this one back there for quite a while. Yes, this is an example of oxidized vitamin C. And this is a testament as to why we should keep vitamin C in a dark, oxygen-less, heat-less environment. The best place to store your vitamin C serums are in a dark, cool, kind of temperate area. You don't want them in direct sun. You don't want them in a hot car. You don't want them, you know, chilling by your countertop in your bathroom where it's exposed to heat from the shower or any cooling from an air conditioner, etc. Vitamin C is finicky, so keeping it stable is important. Now, some brands like The Ordinary actually have, you know, packaging that is UV protective, so kind of like that dark glass. But there are certain vitamin C serums that don't do that. This is one, the Ginger Vitamin C Shot, that I'm actually not a big fan of from Sweet Chef, but this one does not protect their vitamin C in UV packaging. So keep this in a cool, dark area. And then Jumiso, this is actually a really awesome vitamin C in a gel form, but this is actually stabilized. And because it has other vitamins inside of it and other stabilizing ingredients, this one actually doesn't need a light sealed container. Also the Dear Claire's Vitamin C that I'm using in my routine that I love, that's not in a dark container either. So looking for products with a dark container or with that UV protective packaging is a good idea, but it's not always necessary. And if you're really worried about your vitamin C oxidizing, again, you can look for stabilized vitamin C. Ingredients like ferulic acid or vitamin E can actually help stabilize vitamin C. So finding products that do have a vitamin E or ferulic blend are good options for stability. But how does this, and specifically this, which we're going to compare in a second, actually turn into this? Well, oxidation is a type of redox reaction. Basically, electrons are given up in the process. Think about cutting an apple and leaving it out on the counter or cutting an avocado. That right there is oxidation. The oxygen from the air is actually causing that apple or that avocado to brown. Even rust is a good example of this if you have rust on a pipe. And this unfortunately can happen to our beloved L-ascorbic acid. You see, vitamin C is an antioxidant, which is why it's great for our skin. It can basically inhibit the oxidation of other things that are happening. So if you were to pour some vitamin C straight onto one of those browned apples, it can kind of reverse that reaction. That's kind of what it does to our skin. Our skin is constantly bombarded by pollutants, by dirt, by irritants, and by free radicals and therefore damage. And antioxidants can help to kind of give themselves up so that your skin doesn't have to. But you want to make sure that they are good uh, out of the bottle and not looking like this. So how can you tell if your vitamin C is oxidized? The easiest way is by the color. You see, as it oxidizes and gets exposed to heat or light or damage, it does kind of turn into this brown color. Now this is not technically dangerous, it's just less effective. This color of L-ascorbic acid oxidizing is actually erythralose, and this is what's found in some self-tanners. Not all, but some of them. Now, don't go using your expired vitamin C to, you know, tan your skin. If your expired vitamin C is expired, that means that the preservatives are probably also breaking down, and preservatives are good because they preserve products. So there could be other stuff growing in something like this, but how can you tell? Again, looking for that color is really the surefire way. Some vitamin C's are supposed to be a little bit yellow or a little bit milky, but as soon as they start to get this kind of brown, sugary color, or as soon as they start to really change color, that's when you know. You can also check the scent, but if you're not really good with smells or if you haven't worked in cosmetic chemistry and know what a good vitamin C smells like, then it's going to be a little bit difficult. This product specifically has apples in it and so therefore it's actually kind of fermenting in here and it almost smells like kombucha or like malic acid that's fermented. But if you haven't worked in those settings, how would you know? And also some products contain fragrances which make them really nice, really fun to use, really enjoyable. And if your product does have a fragrance, is that fragrance masking any of the oxidation. So really the color and basically changes are 
are the best way to tell. The other thing is that all products do have an expiration date. So if you look at the bottom, it says best buy X amount of time after it's open. You look for that little symbol that has like the little open jar and it says six months or 12 months. Try to take a note, maybe keep a Sharpie in your bathroom and write it down on the bottom of your products. So that way you know when you actually opened it and how much you're using of it. Now, of course, if you did actually keep these in a refrigerator, whether it is your kitchen refrigerator or whether you splurged on the non-essential skincare fridge, that could make products like vitamin C last longer. As someone who works in medical aesthetics and as skincare is my job, like I actually do keep certain products in a regular fridge or in a skincare fridge because I don't have time to use them as quickly as I'd like to. And um, I often donate products to friends and family or even clients if I've swatched them out or tested them as a part of what I do. But for me, uh, having access to a refrigerator or a way to preserve products is really important. And for me, my vitamin C products go in there and a lot of my water-based products go in there or products that have less effective preservatives such as radish root ferment filtrate. Radish root ferment filtrate is great, even honeysuckle, Japanese honeysuckle, they can be used to preserve products, but let's be honest, they are not as effective as phenoxyethanol and even phenoxyethanol is not as effective as methylparaben or polyparabens, etc. Which I understand that the EWG likes to fear monger around, but there have been a lot of studies on these molecules and um, let's all speak to a dermatologist together about what these ingredients actually do and what they mean for us and our beauty and our health. And even though I was afraid of them when I was younger and didn't know better, new studies have been done and they are something that I currently use and don't mind in my routine. Juice Beauty actually updated their packaging. They wanted to make sure that they are using completely recycled materials and really doing what they can for the environment. Their entire offices are solar powered. They actually have a farm where they source some of their olives and grapes and they really are doing more and more for sustainability. And of course, nothing is perfect, but I really appreciate their efforts every single day. And because of that, this product is now repackaged and it is actually better from a light perspective because a little bit of this coating actually stops light from penetrating if you do keep this by a window. Is this what you subscribe for? I absolutely hope so. And I would love for you to take a look in your cabinet. Please send me either on Instagram or Twitter, send me photos of your expired or not expired vitamin C's. And let's have a fun time kind of exploring these things together. We can also talk more about erythrolose or other self tanners. If you're interested in a video about how self tanners work or even about other stability formulas, because yes, vitamin C is L-ascorbic acid, but there's also magnesium ascorbyl phosphate or sodium ascorbyl phosphate or many other ways that vitamin C can be formulated into your products, which as your acne big sister, you know, if you want to talk about it, come to me, sit down with me, my young grasshopper. You're not a grasshopper. You're my young butterfly. And let us have a skin intellectual conversation. I will leave my favorite vitamin C products below, as well as a link to my vitamin C ranking video, as well as this one, which yes, I do still love and adore. And always remember to stay hydrated, apply your vitamin C under your sunscreen and reapply that sunscreen and be beautiful both inside and out. I love you and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> love you guys. Bye.